Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 67 of the year 2019, amending Clause 1 of Decree 35 of the year 2016, establishing the Higher Committee for Urban Planning. The designation of Energy Minister stated in Clause 1 of Decree 35 of the year 2016 regarding the establishment of the Higher Committee for Urban Planning has been amended to become the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs. New Clauses 3, 4, 7 and 8 have been added to Clause 1 of Decree 35 of the year 2016 and the remaining clauses arranged as follows. 3. Minister of the Interior. 4. Minister of Follow-up at the Royal Court. 7. Minister of Oil. 8. Minister of Finance and National Economy. Clause 3 of the edict stipulated that the Prime Minister and each of the ministers according to their domain will implement the provisions of this decree. His Majesty also issued Decree 68 of the year 2019, amending Clause 1 of Decree 1 of the year 2011, establishing the High Committee for Natural Wealth and Economic Security. The designation of the Finance Minister in Clause 5 and the designation of Energy Minister in charge of Oil and Gas Affairs and Electricity and Water Affairs stated in Clause 6 of Article 1 of Decree 1 of the year 2011, establishing the High Committee for Natural Wealth and Economic Security has been amended to become as follows. 5. Minister of Finance and National Economy. 6. Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs. A new clause has been added to Article 1 of Decree 1 of the year 2011, establishing the High Committee for Natural Wealth and Economic Security under Number 7 as follows. 7. Minister of Oil. Article 3 of this decree, the Prime Minister and each of the ministers, according to their domain, were tasked to implement this decree. The Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued two edicts appointing directors in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Civil Service Bureau. Edict 28 of the year 2019 stipulated the appointment of the following as directors in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. Muna Sayyid Kazim Jafar Al Alawi as Director of Inspection Directorate. Ali Jabbar Jawad Hassan as Director of Testing and Meteorology. Badr Farid Abdurrahman as Director of Registration Directorate. Sinan Ali Ahmed Al Jabri as Director of Communication and Awareness Directorate. Ahmed Yusuf Ahmed Taqi as Director of Industrial Zones Directorate. Maram Mukhtar Abdullah Al Mahmid as Director of Information Systems Directorate. Edict 29 of the year 2019 stipulated the appointment of Ahmed Adil Ali Al Yahya as Director of Planning and Manpower Balance in the Civil Service Bureau. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today received the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Ratno Marsudi, at Ghadibiyah Palace. The Deputy King welcomed Marsudi and noted the steady growth of ties between Bahrain and Indonesia. The Deputy King highlighted the importance of strengthening bilateral cooperation across various sectors aimed at border or, or broadening the development and prosperity of both countries and their people. The meeting also provided an opportunity to review regional and international issues of common interest. For her part, Mursudi expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet the Deputy King and highlighted the Deputy King's active support to bolstering ties between Bahrain and Indonesia. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Ghadibiyah a number of royal family members and senior officials at the kingdom, where His Royal Highness stressed that security and stability in the kingdom and the facilitation the government provides for the various economic sectors are vital for growth and progress. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, affirmed the importance of continuing service development that is in line with the requirements of the era, noting the necessity for focusing on providing high-quality services for economic sectors that contribute to the national economy 
economy, especially the tourism and entertainment sector. His Royal Highness noted that the Kingdom's urban achievements are the pillars for continuing the efforts of growth and development, as well as for achieving further gains that accelerate the Kingdom's progress on all levels. He asserted the Kingdom's keenness on providing further facilitations that contribute to activating the commercial and industrial sectors and supporting the commercial sector to perform its role of increasing economic growth in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister hailed the values of cohesion and communication between the people of Bahrain, as well as their customs and traditions that reflect the kingdom's modern image. He asserted the importance of preserving these traditions and establishing them to preserve the social fabric and national unity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadebiya Palace the Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister Retno Marsudi on the occasion of her visit to the Kingdom. His Royal Highness welcomed the guests affirming the importance of exchange visits between officials and bolstering cooperation, consultation and coordination in various regional and international affairs. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister commended the development of cooperation between Bahrain and Indonesia in all fields in light of the fraternal ties. He asserted that the Kingdom aspires to increase cooperation with Indonesia to achieve the interests of the two countries, noting Indonesia's active role in bolstering cooperation between ASEAN countries and GCC countries. His Royal Highness noted the importance of working towards activating commercial exchange and economic and investment cooperation between the two sides, stating that many promising opportunities exist to encourage establishing joint projects and exchanging expertise in the financial and industrial sectors as well as others. For her part, the Indonesian Foreign Affairs Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keenness on bolstering bilateral cooperation, praising the development the Kingdom achieved, which embodies its status and strategic location in the region. Within the framework of the Ministry of Interior's keenness and interest to secure the Ashura season and strengthening the strategy of community partnership and constructive communication with all societies, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received today the Jafari Endowment Board Chairman Yusuf bin Saleh Al Saleh, members of Husseini processions, and a number of Matam heads within the framework of cooperation and coordination for organizing Ashura events. The Minister conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He affirmed that the freedom of practicing religious rights is guaranteed to all in accordance with the established traditions in the country and within the framework of the law, which stem from the values and principles of His Majesty the King's Reform Project. He pointed out that the organization of religious events in a safe atmosphere and without committing any violations or illegal violations violations contributes to enhancing the cultural image of Bahrain. Sheikh Rashid noted that the national plan to promote the spirit of belonging to the nation through its initiative has bolstered the values of loyalty and belonging to the homeland and preserved Bahraini values and traditions. He also noted that cooperation, coordination and community partnership between the parties concerned in the Ashura season would contribute to the revival of this occasion as required. The minister added that the organizers of religious rights have, the, have to contribute to control the situation by not allowing the use of Matams and Husseini processions to achieve goals that are irrelevant to the occasion. The minister stressed the role of Husseini processions and Matam heads in preserving the privacy of the religious form and holding rituals without any violations or irregularities and directed security services to meet their needs and take all measures to preserve security, facilitate traffic and provide a safe atmosphere. For their part, they expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Interior for his cooperation and keenness to facilitate the success of the Ashura season, stressing the need to confront anyone who tries to exploit this occasion and the importance of supporting moderate religious discourse and renounced sectarianism.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met today with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Retno Marsudi, during her official visit to the kingdom. The Minister of Foreign Affairs welcomed his Indonesian counterpart in her visit to the kingdom, which reflects the solid friendship between Bahrain and Indonesia and their willingness to expand coordination on various affairs of mutual interest in order to enhance bilateral cooperation between the two countries. He also pointed out the contributions of the Indonesian community in promoting and developing the kingdom. The Indonesian Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed pride in visiting Bahrain, expressing appreciation for the solid bilateral relations between the two countries and the progress witnessed at all levels. She also commended the efforts exerted by the kingdom in enhancing security and stability in the region. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, announced that the Kingdom won first place on the Arab level and third place on the Middle East and North African level in the education indicators of the Boston Consulting Group regarding the Sustainable Economic Development Calendar, which reflects education's positive role as a main development pillar. The minister stated that the report affirmed that there has been a significant improvement in education in the kingdom over the last decade, asserting that this honorable result is almost identical to the content of the report on the education for all issued by the UNESCO. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdelhassan bin Ali Mirza, inaugurated the Smart Sec Conference and Exhibition for Information Security organized by Bahrain Technology Companies Society, BTEC, in the presence of a large number of companies and organizing presidents. Today, the most important thing in the agenda of many countries and organizations is the security of the data, especially with the cyber security and uh, the cyber hackers who are now uh, committing crimes in this area. And uh, just to show the example of how big uh, this can cost uh, the companies, the recent statistics from the United States shows that in 2018, the American companies uh, have lost 600, $654 billion, not million, billion dollars because of hacking and ransom uh, hacking which asks for money. Plus, they show that the July 2019, which is only a month ago, this was the highest uh, pace of hacking in the world. And the Kingdom of Bahrain, of course, is also prone to this. And recently, the e-government authority announced that uh, they have foiled uh, 5 million viruses and 2.7 million emails which were uh, hacked. And they avoided 50 million uh, hacking into the data. So these are huge and overwhelming numbers for a small country like Bahrain. That's why the government of Bahrain is uh, giving priority to the security of the data. And there is the information, uh, Supreme Information and Communication Committee, which is chaired by His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa. And his directive is to pay utmost attention to the security and reliability of the electronic data in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The importance of this conference or this event is very simple and straightforward. We realize that the security or the cyber security is becoming a very important issue, whether it is uh, the government, the citizens, or even the institute as well as the companies. So the purpose of this event is to create the awareness of this phenomenon. As you know, today we're moving to become a smart city where everything is uh, digitally connected, whether it was at home or in the government or the industry. And hence, as, this, as much as this will make our the quality of living and life easier and make the people happier and, and, and more efficient, at the same time, it opens the doors for hackers or intruders to take advantage of this uh, strong internet or well-connected network and basically intrude or uh, it could cause damage in terms of data and privacy and so on. And therefore, we need to be proactive as opposed to reactive and be aware of all the latest threats and all the latest attacks and the countermeasures and make sure we have it implemented correctly in our you know, institute or uh, uh, home or office so that we are basically in safe, uh, hopefully, and uh, not open for attacks. 
The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs extended its sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Bahraini government and people and the Arab and Islamic nations on the occasion of the new Hijri year. In its regular session, presided over by the Council Chairman Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Council praised the remarkable success of this year's Hajj season thanks to the great efforts exerted by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud. It also affirmed Bahrain's pride in supporting religious freedoms and rituals within the framework of its keenness to ensure rights and freedoms for all, and commended His Majesty the King support of religious seasons and the efforts of the official government agencies in cooperation with the concerned civil authorities to make this season a success. The council called on those in charge of reviving the Ashura season to work diligently to take advantage of this religious occasion to spread the values of moderation. The Under Secretary for International Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, inaugurated a workshop specialized in enhancing abilities in the kingdom on protect or protecting the non profit sector from exploitation by terrorist groups, which comes in partnership with the National Committee for follow up on the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to all Security Council resolutions and the anti money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism committee in cooperation with the United Nations Counter Terrorism Center. Obviously, I'm here at this event as a representative of financial institutions and explaining what role we play in trying to prevent the movement of money around the world for terrorist purposes. Now, although you can't always blame the pipe, the, the passage of the money, you know, and it's difficult at times to understand the purpose of why somebody is sending money from A to B, um, obviously all financial institutions have got a role to play in trying to prevent you know, funds being moved for criminal purposes. And as one of the previous speakers said, uh, it doesn't matter what the political, political religious beliefs are, all terrorism events are criminal activity. Within the context of the preparations for the meetings of the Committee of Ministers of Labour and the Committee of Ministers of Development and Social Affairs of the GCC states, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Labour and Social Development, uh, Subah Salem Adosari, participated in the meetings of the Committee of the Undersecretaries of Labour Ministries and Undersecretaries of the Ministries of Development and Social Affairs held in Masqat Oman. Dusseri said that, that the committee discussed the Gulf labor issues, particularly the implementation of strategic initiatives approved by the Committee of Ministers of Labor in the GCC, in addition to the qualification standards and professional tests in the labor market, and according and coordinating, uh, co coordinating and uh, cooperation among member countries in Arab and international conferences. The National Bureau for Revenue, the MBR, highlighted that the VAT registration process is open for entities uh, generating or expect to generate between 18,750 Bahraini dinars and 500,000 Bahraini dinars in annual VATable supplies. Concerned entities that wish to register early for VAT with the NBR will have the option of choosing the date to start implementing VAT until the end of the grace period. The MBR stressed that uh, collaboration and raising awareness on technical and procedural aspects of VAT are of utmost importance to ensure the success of the VAT application process. The MBR noted the positive cooperation provided by businesses regarding the proper application of VAT, adding that more than 4,500 entities have registered for VAT since its launch within the Kingdom on the 1st of January 2019.